So everybody of you who have laptops, if you can open this tutorial page, um, all the pages are linked from there so you can follow along. The resource loader slash migration guide users slash tutorial. Can we start? All right, Ron? Um, I'm going to get started, but I'm going to steal your phone mic. Yeah. Because we only got my microphone. All right. All right, thank you. This is a little bit inconvenient with the microphone, but I'm sure we'll make it work. Um, so this tutorial is going to be about gadgets and resource loader and our rewrite of the gadgets extension that has also been dubbed resource loader 2. Um, Basically, what we're going to do in the next hour or so is we're going to um, give you an introduction to basically to like what gadgets are, what Grease Loader is, and what their current state is. Um, then there's going to be um, basically the tutorial part, which is us showing um, how you can enable Resource Loader for a gadget and fix any of the issues that might pop up um, using a real world, real world example which means the team will actually take a gadget and migrate it on the screen. Um, that is going to take most of the time. And then at the end, we will give a short presentation about the gadget's rewrite um, and tell you about some of its features. And if time permits, we will give you uh, a short demonstration of that as well. Um, so Timo is going to start um, talking about gadgets for a few minutes. Then I'll talk about research loader for a few minutes. and. Then we'll get started with the tutorial part. OK. So to, to start off, um, I'll, I'll in briefly introduce the concept of gadgets. Uh, gadget is a MediaWiki extension uh, written by Daniel Kensler in 2007. Um, it allows users to create JavaScript and CSS modules um, on their own wiki without uh, needing uh, server access. Uh, these can then be shared through the preferences panel with all other users. Um, so it's really easy to enable something without having to know how, to, how JavaScript works. Any user who knows how to use the preferences can enable a gadget. Um, these are managed by admins, uh, developed by everyone, and reviewed by admins right now. Uh, we want to change that, but for now that is the current state. Uh, um, CSOPs on any wiki can create a gadget, uh, update it, and the community can, well, even the non-admins can uh, edit them through the talk page and make suggestions. Um, that's the current state. Uh, that will change, which we will show in the end of the presentation. Uh, Ron, why don't you introduce a little bit about Research Loader? Uh, yeah, so Research Loader is, let's see, we have, a t we have a documentation page about this. Yeah, so Research Loader is um, a kind of a new-ish component in MediaWiki that we wrote in 2010. Um, it is um, a front-end resource um, management and delivery system, which means that it manages and loads JavaScript and CSS in MediaWiki. So Research Loader is currently um, used by all of MediaWiki core and by all extensions, but um, it is not used to load gadgets by default unless you flag your gadget as this gadget should be loaded by Research Loader. Um, the main advantages of using Resource Loader are that, um, well, basically, your stuff will load faster because of all the optimizations that exist in it. Um, you will have better support for internationalization um, because it hooks into MediaWiki's server-side internationalization framework. Um, and there is dependency management such that if your gadget requires some, say, jQuery UI component or whatever, um, you can tell it, I need jQuery UI button and it will you know, make it happen. It will load it for you in an efficient way. Um, as I said, gadgets do not yet use these by default. You can make them use them, and Timo will show you how in just a minute. Um, as a side note, with the brave new future of Gadgets 2.0, which we will tell you about at the end of this session, um, Using Resource Loader for gadgets will be mandatory in that we will no longer support um, having gadgets that are not loaded by Resource Loader. Um, so we're, what we're kind of trying to do is to get people to convert their gadgets, because enabling Resource Loader sometimes breaks certain things that you don't have to fix. So we're trying to get people to convert their gadgets 
you know, sooner rather than later, so that they've already, you know, ideally everything's already been converted by the time we switch over and then nothing breaks because everything's been converted already. Um, so I will hand it back to Timo and he will do the tutorial part. Okay. Um, yes? Just wondering if the resource loader is ever going to get people willing to load user scripts. If you could make um, a question for recording as well. Uh, yeah, so he's asking whether resource loader will become available for user scripts. Um, I will answer it at the end of the session. Um, that will become clearer uh, and at the end of the session. Uh, if it's, you still want to know more, then you can ask, so feel free. All right, so let's move on to the next chapter. So this is the migration guide um, for resource loader. Um, not all of these are mandatory. These are mostly advices, best practices, uh, things that make it better, faster, stronger, you know, whatever uh, adjective you want to use. Um, the main part here is where the MW loader was introduced. And I will give an example of that. So um, I'm using test Wikipedia for uh, this presentation so that I don't break the life site uh, when I'm experimenting with the gadget. Uh, you should know that this test Wikipedia runs the exact same version as the other Wikipedias. It's not a beta version. This is just you can do what I'm doing now um, later in, on any other wiki. So as example, I've chosen um, the Wikimedia portal preview gadget. Um, it is defined uh, in the gadget definition page with um, this uh, little line here. This syntax, by the way, is a fairly complicated syntax. Um, well, compared to wiki text, it's not that bad, but it's, you know, it's still fairly complicated. Oh, I think it's worse than wiki text. It's worse than wiki text, yes. <laughs> um, but so also, this is going away in the new version of gadgets. But for now, we're showing how you can migrate today uh, without needing anything else. So we're going to use this syntax for now. So what this uh, gadget does, so you probably know about this portal page. Um, and you may wonder, well, how is that created? Who manages that? How does that work? So at some point in time, somebody thought it would be cool to manage this from MetaWiki. Um, and there is like raw HTML here. It's, it sounds very bad if you're a web developer like managing raw HTML. That's not the point of this presentation. We're using the gadget as an example use case of how to migrate it. Uh, so I've imported that page to test Wikipedia. And there's a temp version as well, where this, which is not protected. That anybody can edit. So this is the gadget page itself. It's a fairly average gadget. It's got a lot, lot of JavaScript. Um, if you've used Resource Loader before, you may probably uh, see a few things that, are, uh, that might potentially be a problem. But for now, we'll see what it does um, in the current state. So what it does is it shows a link here and brings up a pop-up which renders the HTML so that any anonymous user can make a contribution to this page and preview what it looks like. Uh, very simple. So let's go ahead and enable the resource loader for this gadget. So all I do to do that is add this little annotation. And this annotation will basically tell, let you do two things. Uh, the first thing it will do, it will actually load this gadget for resource loader. It's not a simulation. It's not a test. It actually loads it with all the new features that uh, Rowan has uh, discussed. Um, and the second thing it will do is it will let you know whether everything still works after the rewrite of gadget. Because if it works with this, it'll work in, in the second version as well. So let's go ahead and save that. Now, mind you, most gadgets, when you enable this, will not break. Um, I've chosen one that does break so that we have something to talk about. But in most cases, enabling this will simply work, and there's nothing you have to fix. So let's go back to this page and refresh. Now, it might take a while for, declare, for the cache to clear, so I'm not quite sure whether. Yes, so now it breaks. So we've got an error here. Now, you might wonder, undefined, did resource loader delete this function? No, it didn't delete the function. Um, what happened here is uh, this script was written in a way that, the, that, re that assumes that it is running in the so-called global scope. Um, it is using uh, a fairly bad practice to access a global function here, but the function itself is not defined global. So unless it's actually global, this will fail. Uh, this is fairly easy to fix by using a click handler. Uh, yes, you may ask. Yeah, it's, it's not global anymore because... Um, yes, very good question. So it's not global anymore because we want to protect the gadget from each other from uh, leaking the scope. As well as what was very common is gadgets that use the same variable name and it will break. 
Like for example, if you have a for loop and you use the i variable to increment it and you're running in a global scope, then some other loop that also uses the i variable will break because it's the same variable and everything is global by default. So we changed the default scope to be local. Um, if you want something to be global, uh, that's still perfectly possible. Um, you may know how to create a global function in JavaScript. The short version is it's wrapped in a Right. So if you want to create a global function for real, you know, you, you can do that. Um, but it's not anymore by default. Yeah, basically, it's wrapped in a... Uh, in a closure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this fixes a lot of bugs, but it introduces something in this case. So I've pre-made the fix, and then we will walk through the diff to spare some time. It's actually a very small fix. It's not a big deal. So let's see what I actually changed. So what I changed is instead of accessing a global function from the href attribute, we're using a click handler using uh, jQuery. Uh, you could use another library. You could use add event listener if you want to. jQuery is not required to use, but this is like the easiest way to do it within MediaWiki. And this will work because this function is in the local scope, in the same scope as this code is running. So let's save that. I've prepared most tabs in advance, but the Wi-Fi is still a little slow. So let's see if the cache is already clear. Yes, and now it works again. It may take a while to load. Mm. Oh, I see. Yep. I guess I made a little syntax error, but in general, it would still work exactly like it would before. So that's basically the, the, uh, one example of a fix that might uh, be required. Um, there's a lot of other things that are mostly recommendations, good practices that you, that you may want to uh, read through. Um, whenever there's a new version of MediaWiki, I try to keep this up to date with the latest uh, recommendation and advices. These are not breaking changes. These are simply advices um, that I would recommend uh, you follow. So let's see what would be like, the ultimate version if you uh, really go for it. I want to be very, uh, like, using all these best practices, what it would look like then. We'll walk through the code again. So uh, one of the things, um, so you can see this original gadget was written in 2008 and hasn't changed since. So that's, you know, like a little example of how stable the gadget environment has been uh, and will be in the future except for this little migration here. Uh, it was written in 2008, and it still works today. Of course, when I enabled Resource Loader, something broke, but that's where the migration guide is for. So one of the things we'll notice here is I'm using JSLint. I recommend you use JSHint, JSLint, whatever you prefer. Um, also, you may know that I use a lot of white space, a lot of comments. Uh, as Ronas discussed, Resource Loader takes care of all minification and stripping and concatenation. You, don't, you can be as liberal and as elaborate if you want to make code more easier to uh, develop for uh, uh, colleagues. So there's no more excuse to like squeeze every ugly space out of it. You can be uh, as clear and as good as you can be. I'm using jQuery Ajax. Um, I'm using a utility function to get the API. There's a lot of things here. Yes, and I'm using document ready. Uh, another thing we can note here is I will go back to it's a little uh, hard to do this one-handed, but let me see if I can click it on. So as Ron has discussed, one of the things that is new in Resource Loader, or rather new in Gadget with Resource Loader, is the ability to use other modules. Like you can use jQuery UI, you can use uh, a ton of different modules. And one of them is MediaWiki Utilities. And that's the one I've used here to create the portal link. So this is required so that any module you use is loaded before and it's loaded together with this gadget. 
and let's save this as well. So here it is again, I've used a different label this time, no particular reason. And there it is again. And now it's fully migrated to resource loader with just a few lines of code and everything still works. So again, in most cases, you will not have to make any changes, it will still work. Um, in the event that something does break, I recommend using the migration guide and looking through if there's anything there. Um, if it still doesn't work or you can't find the problem, uh, use the top page of the migration guide. There's a lot of people watching that page that can help you uh, just link to your script and say that it doesn't work with resource loader and that you want help and we will try to figure out if it's a bug or we should expand the documentation, maybe you missed something, everything is possible. So any questions regarding um, resource loader in gadgets so far? Yes, you can come and set up them. The syntax is on the extension gadgets page, I believe. Uh, yes, there it is. Uh, also new, by the way, that uh, I might mention here is that as of the current deployed version, it's also possible to load a gadget by default, which means you can have a gadget that can be used by anonymous users. And also all registered users will have it by default. So this is uh, what I would recommend that, for example, if you have some script that you have in CommonJS and you want people to be able to disable it, the easiest way is to make a gadget out of it and people can still disable it in their preferences. So. You can't disable it, but you still keep it in. You can, you, you know, you can disable it in your preferences. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but what, what if I want the gadget that users can't disable, but I just want to use gadget instead of CommonJS? Um, that's possible in the new version. Uh, in 2.0, there will be the ability to hide a gadget mm -hmm. uh, that you, but it's intended for uh, using a, a utility gadget. So for example, say you have your own, jQuery, your own jQuery plugin that you want to use in two gadgets. You can make a hidden gadget f for your jQuery plugin that isn't in the preferences, and then you can use it as a dependency in other gadgets. So you can make your own modules um, as well and use them in other modules. So you can get really efficient uh, in reuse of code without loading the same thing twice. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah okay. Another question, can I load the gadget from another week? So the question is, can you load a gadget from another wiki? Ron, do you want to tackle that? Um, I think the answer is wait about a half hour and we'll tell you. Because this is part of the, like, the brave new future. Sorry, can you repeat it? No, that's private data. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the preferences are private. But what you can uh, do if... Um, there are several bots that have database access and make reports of how many preferences are used. So you can see how many users use it. You can't see who is using it, but you can see how many users are using them. So he's saying, um, if somebody reports a bug, it will be useful to know what gadgets he is using. Is that correct? Um, yes, uh, that would be an interesting use case. Um, you could always ask a user to make a screenshot of his preferences panel of the gadgets. Uh, you could just ask. Um, I admit it's a little harder, but on the other hand, preferences are private. So I don't think this is um, a major issue. But you can always search the gadgets because gadgets should be stable. They are for all users. So unlike user scripts, um, these should be managed by the community. So if enough users test them, you should probably f uh, find bugs ver very soon. Um, and also if uh, the user would be advanced enough to use the console, um, you will have very detailed debugging of which gadget uh, is causing an exception, for example, so that is always uh, a possibility. Okay. Uh, I realized that generally, 
but like with the, the last 10 years you had user scripts and people load the user scripts and that wasn't private and that was never a problem. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is a case for making not all preferences private. So it's well, easier to track. Without yes, I admit this is easier to track, but I just want to emphasize that gadgets have been around since 2007. We've only improved them. Yeah, so I know, I know, but okay. just in general, there's like no good reason for this to be private. I would recommend you ask a feature request on Bugzilla and see what the developers of the extension think of that and what other users think of that. Yes, uh, sure. There's no technical reason for it not to be possible. So, um, Shall we move on to the third part? Um, do we not have like, a wiki page where people request? Um, do we not have a wiki page where people request? Like, yes. Uh, these I have added as uh, in case. So these are two gadgets you may know about, TinEye and PerchTab. These were had a transparent switch, so they added resource loader and it just worked. No uh, fixes necessary. A navigation pop-up, somebody added that. Um, that is uh, a known problem. It's probably something very simple, but this gadget is so big, so I haven't looked through all of that. But um, I imagine that if it would split it up into small sections, it it will only take a few minutes to find out what the bug is. It's probably something very simple, just like with the gadget I showed here. Um, the migration guide is pretty complete so far, uh, except for navigation problems because it's so big. I've migrated a lot of gadgets, too big to list here. Um, so is there anyone who has a gadget that has maybe tried to migrate to resource loader but had issues, or wants to express that it worked fine? <coughs> All right. Now we can take a stab at navigation problems. Sure. Uh, how are we in time? Um, well, it's 11.20. It's 11 We've got until almost noon, 11.45-ish. OK. So I think we have a, we should have about 15 minutes to uh, mess with navigation problems a little bit. All right. Let's uh, uh, try this. All right. I will, I will just mic you. Oh, I can so just you put can, it on. Or you can uh, put it on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go ahead. I put it here. You should so, probably put it near your mouth, right? Oh. Oh, uh, where's my mouse? There it is. So where is... It's a big page, so it'll take a while. So something else I'd like to emphasize here is you see that this was originally in multiple files. Um, I guess somebody merged it into one file for performance reasons so that it loads faster. Gadget supports having multiple files in one module so they are loaded in a single request. So uh, I would really recommend you both for editing as well as for debugging for a lot of reasons. Um, split things up into, into more manageable chunks. Um, it's not it doesn't do great performance in any way. It might even improve it so that you can faster load this page for editing. So let's try and find some common things. Maybe somebody is using. So yeah, that's being used. That could be, uh, it could be the same thing that we've um, shown in the earlier thing, where it uses a global function. That would be very simple to fix. And it would actually improve the gadget by uh, minimizing the chance of uh, conflicting with others. Well, it's not, not everything in gadgets pop-ups is broken. There's something, there's an error causing somewhere causing the rest to break. So it, it could, I don't know, let's try. Uh,
Now, right now, it will probably work because it's not using resource loader. The gadget itself is working fine. Uh, we're not repairing the gadget in general. Um, but y just in case, it really is broken. So this is working fine. Um, let's yes. What? Oh, okay. Yes, I know. I'm going to copy it to. <laughs> yes, thank you. Maybe it's already here, but just to make sure it's the last, the latest version. It's a lot of script to save. <laughs> it's not on here. Oh, there it is. Yes, that too. I don't need a page where there aren't into wiki links. Okay. No, I know. So it should work. So there is an exception here. Uh, so something I didn't mention yet is there, so by default, Reset Loader packs everything into one very small thing, or two small things for cache fragmentation uh, avoidance. So we enable debug modes to get the real uh, line numbers. So let's try again. All right, so now, yes. The debug mode doesn't do closure wrapping. So this is most likely the same issue that we've discussed in the earlier um, gadget example for the portal preview, just a global scope. So that should be very simple to fix, hopefully. Uh, let's, let's, let's try. I'm afraid there's too many uh, pages where it uses that for, to fix them all. Oh, hold on. Let the back mode again. I'm using the Chrome debugger, by the way. It's installed by default. I really recommend it if you're debugging JavaScript. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is. Right. Dot original. I'm trying to, yes. Yeah, it's a lot of lines, so. Very, very old script written before all these 
fancy uh, helper functions where they could exist, and so it includes a really, really lot of code that it doesn't need. It has yeah. its own parser, it has its own uh, internationalization, it has like everything. Yes. Yeah, it could be anything, I think. So this is uh, Yeah, that could be anything at this point. That is a bug. Uh, Actually, I think I may have seen something. All right. Yeah, that is a. That is no. Yeah, this should work. Uh huh. And it's actually using a global variable. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. To your question. Uh. Yeah. So to answer Brad's question, um, he asked whether there was a way to make research loader do the closures thing but still not do the white space uh, stripping. That is currently a bug um, in the way that we've implemented debug mode. Debug mode is too different from like real production mode to really be of any use debugging things because you want it to be as close as possible and just not do the minification thing. But we've, we're aware of this and we should fix this sometime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to extend the object. That's right, this is a local function. If it's using it as a function for whatever reason. If it's, if it's, is it doing new PG anywhere? No, no, it's, it's overriding it, you see. Right, so why is it doing a function? I don't know. Do me to stop. But that shouldn't do anything. No, but this is using window PG. Yeah, that window PG is the global PG. Ah, right, and the and below is using PG, and here it's using PG okay. instead of window PG. Global, then window PG rewrites function PG, but if it's in the closure, then it doesn't. Something Let's see if that's it. That might be it. Very, very good spot. Yeah. This is really not a not an average gadget that you'll likely be facing. Um, if it would have gone through natural evolution, then uh, this would never end up like this. Without the debug. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, we changed, we removed this function. So I, I think that might see what's happening. Um, if you look down, it's trying to assign pg.structures.original. Mm -hmm. Yes. But there it's assigning window. Yeah, but that's a global function, and it's making it local here. And this isn't even necessary because the global scope is always available. But that's just for performance. Anyway, because it's 11:33, I think yeah. we move on to the next part. But 
fuck, you don't get any error anymore, you just No. It just doesn't work. Which is okay. even more annoying. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we we'll, uh, Yeah. We'll have to figure it at some point. Yeah. yeah. This is a very yeah, it's, it's a kind of a hard problem sometimes. Alright, so I'll just take the mic while you fiddle. Mm -hmm. So while well, Timo fiddles with the computer, um, because we're in the last 10-15 um, minutes or so of this session, um, we are going to give a quick presentation about um, the gadgets rewrite that we're working on to kind of give you a taste of what the future of the system is going to be like. Um, this is a project that Timo and I have been working on um, off and on sort of slowly over the past year or so. Um, but we're hoping to get this live at some point later in 2012, probably in the summer. Yeah, we will present a lot of things. Oop, thank you. We'll present a lot of things, but if you want to know um, what we are working towards to, um, MiWiki RL2 or RL slash V2 spec is basically our schedule, our plan of what we are going to implement. So if you're really curious, um, that's where you could go. Should I do the first half? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is just a, a presentation that we've got. Um, I'm going to skip some of the slides. We're going to kind of blow through this a little bit quickly. Um, but we will also give, uh, hopefully, a slightly updated version because we'll have made progress. Um, a more elaborate version of this presentation at Wikimania in Washington next month. Um, so let's see what are gadgets. Well, we kind of covered this, didn't we? Um, gadgets are wiki pages that contain JavaScript and CSS. Um, and there's an overview of them on special gadgets and they appear in your preferences over there. But I think this is pretty basic and we've already covered that. Um, so there's some issues with the current gadget uh, workflow that we're trying to address because the system has basically not changed at all since 2007. Um, so script creation and editing occurs in the media we can namespace. This is a problem because you need to be an administrator to edit that namespace. Um, gadget management also occurs in the media we can namespace at the special uh, MediaWiki gadget definition page um, where you create and remove gadgets by editing that weird list syntax, which, as I said before, um, I'm convinced that it is even more evil than Wikitex itself. It's, um, well, I mean, we show you guys what it looks like, but this is pretty terrible and intimidating and not very usable. Um, and it also, it's got all the, it's got like the dependencies metadata and which files belong to which gadget metadata. Um, for all of the gadgets in one page. So there's no separation um, of the metadata of a single gadget into a separate page or anything like that. Um, as far as internationalization goes, it's not really supported at all. Um, of course, in cases where some, we don't have support for something, the community works around it and builds their own support. Um, so you've got these um, JSON structures that occur within gadgets where all the translations are stored. This is the main reason why gadgets are often like 8,000 lines long. Um, but obviously, this is, not, um, this is not a great way to handle things because, you know, we have native localization support in MediaWiki Core on the PHP side, and there's not really a reason why you couldn't have that in JavaScript using the same framework, except that, you know, it's not been done yet. Um, then as far as sharing gadgets works, because you know some gadgets like Hotcat are quite popular and are used across multiple wikis. Um, there is no native way for that uh, to support that either. Um, so again, the community has come up with workarounds, which um, usually just involves like you know loading, like you know using import script or whatever to load some weird action equals raw URL from another wiki. Um, which of course bypasses, you know, resource loader completely. Um, so that's not a very um, nice way to go about things. Um, there is a way to export import gadgets if you want to, you know, 
copy a gadget, which is an even worse idea because you'll essentially fork it and you know get out of sync with the main copy. Um, but you know the export and import feature doesn't even actually work properly, so um, forget about that even. So the result that you get is that if you look at, I mean, this is something that we took in last November, but if you look at the Hotcat on Commons versus the Hotcat on Dutch Wikipedia, um, there are different versions. And Dutch Wikipedia is nine minor versions behind Commons. And the one on Russian Wikipedia is even farther behind. So now Timo can introduce you to like the brave new world of the future. The brave new world of the future. Thank you. Um, so we've already discussed what Resource Loader is, so we'll just quickly uh, run through this. Um, it's um, focused on the front-end performance. Uh, it allows you to access interface messages, just like you could do from a PHP extension, but in JavaScript. Um, it provides uh, many JavaScript libraries. We've got jQuery by default. We've got our own MediaWiki library for a lot of utility functions, such as accessing the API in a very convenient way. Um, we've got several jQuery plugins that you can use uh, out of the box. Um, and I shouldn't forget that, oh, excuse me, it is now possible in Resource Loader Core uh, to load a module from a different wiki. That is now possible in MediaWiki Core in the currently deployed version. It is not yet used in gadgets, but that's what Gadgets 2.0 is about, to utilize all these new features um, in, uh, as, as, as good as you can use them. So this is a very quick example of what's already possible today. Uh, the, the, the contrast isn't really that good, but uh, we're basically just using j uh, jQuery for creating some elements, and then we're using mw.message to get an interface message uh, from the library. So what this means is that this gadget was loaded from the server with only the messages that you use and only the language that the user has. And it includes fallback, uh, just like MiniWiki Core does, so it's a very efficient way of loading localization. When does it get replaced with the correct text? On the server before? No, you can do this in JavaScript. Okay, so then it gets loaded from the server. You get the message, uh, you get the messages from the server. Okay. And you can use them wherever you want to use them. Okay, use but, but you get a special request from the server? No, it is handled when the request is loaded, when the gadget is loaded, yeah. everything else comes along as well. It's in one request for scripts, all the script files, all the style files, and all the messages that you use. But only the messages that you need and only the language that you need. Okay, but how do you know which languages are you using, right? A resource loader how is in the... Which messages are you using? How, how do you know You that? declare which messages you need in the... In the declare all the messages? Yes. Just like in gadget definition where you have dependencies, you have something for messages. Okay. Yes. So another thing that's going to change is we're going to create a different namespace for gadgets. There are not interface messages that don't belong in the MediaWiki namespace. This has been basically just an historical thing. Um, that sort of, the main reason for this is for maintenance, because it makes the MediaWiki namespace a little less full of stuff, so you can very easily find all the gadget files. Um, and it has separate permissions. So uh, a, a very big request is to allow the uh, good programs in the community to allow the edit gadgets without needing the confirmation of an administrator who doesn't even know JavaScript. And vice versa, of course, if you have an admin who really does know JavaScript uh, but isn't allowed to edit it on a certain wiki or for whatever reason. So this makes it really more um, right because the right users who know what they're doing are able to edit them. Uh, no. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll repeat the question. So he is asking, are we planning to move common.js and the similar scripts in the video games as well to gadgets? Uh, no, we are not going to do that probably because they're not gadgets, that's for one. Uh, but you can make them into a gadget if you want to. You can delete that page and immediately will not load common.js if it doesn't exist. So you can totally do that and I would recommend you do if you, uh, that would be nice. So next, management has been improved a lot in the second version. Um, instead of having this crippled syntax on gadget definition, we now have a special page. It's we're using, we're building upon the existing special page. It will have an editor uh, to edit these in a very visual, very simple way. Uh, we have a new namespace for the gadget definition uh, manifests, where this is using uh, the JSON uh, formatting, which allows you to, for example, watch a gadget without having to uh, 
Like if you would watch MediaWiki definitions, you would get updates from every single gadget. And now you can watch a single gadget definition as well as it makes it possible to import it very easily. Because if you import the scripts and this thing, you have everything. So you only have a few messages, a few pages, and you can import everything. So this is a prototype of what it looks like. Uh, we might change this design, but this is the, the current, um, what it looks like. This is the editor. There's auto completion for everything. New here is a shared gadget in this system. So certain wikis that are marked as being a repository, uh, we will probably end up using MediaWiki.org as the gadget repository, similar to how Commons is for images. And on that wiki, you can mark a gadget as being shared, and then it will appear in the preferences of all other wikis. So you can have one central version of the gadget, and it will be able to load it from any wiki. And just like MediaWiki does always, it will load it in the local context. So even though um, on MediaWiki.org, people uh, may use vector in English, if you load it on Hebrew Wiktionary in Monobok uh, in French, then it will do that. And it will load it just as efficient as it would on any other wiki. So localization, I've already mentioned this a little bit. It uses the MediaWiki core localization framework. It's accessible through the MW library in the message uh, constructor. We also implemented uh, basic parsing. So you can use variable replacements. You can use the site name. You can use plural. Uh, we also implemented grammar very recently. That was done by uh, the localization team. So great thanks to them to, for doing that. So again, this is a very basic example. You could have a message gadget example welcome. These messages are in the MediaWiki namespace because that's where they belong. Uh, it could contain a dollar sign, and then in JavaScript, you could replace that like that, and it would work. So lastly, using other modules. The gadgets can use other modules. They can also use other gadgets. Uh, like I said before, you can hide a gadget to make it a utility. You can create your own jQuery plugins and share them with other wikis, with other gadgets. Dependency management. So for example, a very uh, commonly used class uh, is the MW title constructor. It allows you to localize parse titles just like you can do in PHP. Uh, so for example, if you have a dialog where you can input a file name, you would previously have to check for lowercase, uppercase, the translated version, the canonical version, so image, file, and maybe in German Wikipedia you would have bild and datai. And you know, this makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can get the URL, the main text, the, URL, uh, the prefix, you can get it all from that. Duplication, already mentioned, uh, sharing the gadget is now possible. So if this would be on MediaWiki.org and you would be on Dutch Wikipedia, you would have shared gadgets, a new tab. We might merge these tabs. We're not quite sure how to handle this. We'll ask you for your feedback. Uh, and you can enable the gadgets uh, on there. So before we go to the demo, are there any questions? Uh, yes, so he's, yeah, you can do that. Repeat the question. So, I was going to do that. <laughs> so he's asking, um, how does translation work in the MediaWiki namespace, if you would create a message there? Um, it would basically work like any other message. You can use, uh, it uses the native handling, so you have a subpage for English, a subpage for any, uh, every other language. How do you ask other people to translate? Um, we don't have a system for that in Resource Loader or in Gadgets, but, um, there is, for example, the translate extension, so that would be an option, which I believe is or will be enabled on MediaWiki.org. Yeah, it is. I'm not sure what it does there. Okay, and another option is, um, yes, so because um, Translate Wiki is integrated with the Wikimedia Foundation cluster, if this message is translated over there, it will automatically be available on all wikis, including in gadgets. Um, we haven't used that, but that's totally possible, and I would really uh, find that awesome if somebody would do that. So you could create an extension or a project or whatever on Translate Wiki to have your messages and they will be translatable through translatewiki.net and they will be nightly synced to the cluster just like everything else. It's similar to how on Commons there is Wikimedia license text, you may know it. It's also translated on Translate Wiki and nightly synced. So that's totally possible. Um, and I, I can't wait to see uh, how 
translators will be going using Translate Wiki for translation of a gadget. That's really cool. I just wanted to mention for the recording that the original question was how do you ask people to translate um, gadget messages? Um, so, are there any more questions? And otherwise, we will do the demo thing. I'll let Timo fill okay. with the computer again. So, we've created the page. Or maybe we could work. Oh, thanks. I don't hear the speaker, so it's kind of. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no application, it's just for recording. Yeah. Uh, so this page on MediaWiki.org contains a lot of information about uh, this demo. Uh, let's open that page actually. Sorry. So most of this information I've already discussed today, so I will not go through that again. Uh, the main thing is this section, the prototype wikis. We've set up four wikis uh, to experiment this uh, in very many different uh, configurations. So something you may not know yet is uh, just like in Commons, it is possible to use this repository on a different wiki. So if you have your own wiki, uh, like in an internal company or some other domain, you can configure MediaWiki.org as your repository for gadgets uh, through the API. So you don't have to copy and paste. You don't have to use the new import feature. You can, of course. It has been improved. But you can also use it right away. Um, so we've got the repository wiki, which is the main wiki. We've got a second repository to see how they go when connected next to each other. The configuration is all listed here. Uh, this one is not connected to the labs accounts. This is a, a standalone wiki, so you can create a new account here. Let's see if I can log in. Yeah, it'll. It's really slow. Um, this is not good. No. But I've shown the screenshots in the presentation, so you know what that looks like and how it would work. Um, you can use the special gadgets. Uh, so there will be. That, that they can be. You, communities can decide how they want to do this. So um, right now, in the current situation, only administrators can edit the MediaWiki namespace. That will continue to be the case. But we will have new namespace for uh, the gadgets. For the gadgets. And um, by default, nobody has this right. Uh, depending on how the community wants to do this, we can either grant the, the rights to administrators and or we could create a new group for gadget developers. Um, I would really like that, but you know, the community decides. The, the gadget extension allows both uh, configurations. You could also separate the ability to create a gadget and the ability to edit the gadget. So you can control it exactly how you want it to be. Yes? Oh, OK. It's getting there. It's slow. I think it's uh, nine minutes. It's nine minutes before noon, before the start of the next session. So uh, I think we should let these people go and go get set up in the main room, because that's where we'll be supposed to be presenting at noon. All right. Thank you. So thank you for your attendance, and we apologize for the slowness of our demo setup, um, which, you know, if you really feel like complaining about a complainer, I am. Sorry? It's a labs problem. Okay. Yes. So if you really feel strongly about it, Ryan Lane is a person you should be complaining to. Yeah. The question was, do we have central auth? Oh, very good question. The question was, do we have central auth on uh, the testing system? No, we do not, but we have a shared user table. So you are not automatically logged in from one wiki to the next, but you, do, you can log in with the same credentials once you've created your account once. But yeah, I think we should uh, call it a day and uh, move to the other room. All right. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. I'm going to take the thing out of your pocket. Thank you.